so glad that you're here today. Welcome back. For the entire next month, we're going to be sharing with you a whole collection of things that we make instead of buy here at the farmhouse. All right, so the first one I wanna share with you is very, very simple, but it comes out with a big punch, and that is making your own whipped cream. It is incredibly simple, but it's something that I always try to do myself because the flavor is just so much better than that you can buy in the store. So I'm starting out here with just heavy whipping cream. Uh, if you have access to this fresh, that's awesome as well, or you can pick it up in the grocery store. Um, but this is just heavy whipping cream. I have two cups that I'm going to put into my stand mixer. It actually is really helpful to do this in a metal bowl that is a little bit chilled. It'll mix up just a little bit nicer for you. So in here, I put that in and I'm just going to go ahead and turn my mixer on and it's gonna start working. This is gonna take anywhere between four and five minutes probably to get the right consistency. Okay, I'm gonna stop a couple times throughout the process here and just show you what it looks like because you don't want it to be too runny. And if you go too long, you're gonna start turning your whipped cream into butter. And that's not what we're going for. So this is after about a minute. You can see that it's still very, very drippy. Um, if you look in here, I'll show you, it's still very, very runny. So we're gonna turn the mixer back on. Let it keep working. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. We've got it thickening up. It's starting to form some little peaks in here but it's still not quite thick enough at this point. Okay, to my two cups of heavy whipping cream, I'm going to add um, about a fourth to a third of a cup of powdered sugar. This is kind of up to you how sweet you want it. I really like it to just be a little bit sweet, not too gaggy. Um, so I'm going to do about a fourth of a cup. And then I'm also going to add about a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And you can just eyeball that. It doesn't have to be a perfect, precise measurement. So I'm gonna turn this back on and it's going to continue mixing for about another minute and we should be ready to go. So this is what we're going for. It's nice and thick. It's gonna actually stay on your beater really nicely. It's nice and thick to stay on your finger. If you wanted to pipe with this and put it on to a cake or onto some pie, it's now thick enough at this point that we could do that. Um, if it's too runny, you, you go to put it onto a dessert, it's really just going to flatten out and it's not gonna be very appetizing or pretty to look at. All right, now if you wanna give it a little bit of extra bang, you can put in a couple of drops of essential oil. Um, really great ones for that are cinnamon or nutmeg um, or a, some kind of a citrus oil. You could put in lemon or lime or wild orange, just kind of depending on what your dessert is and what you're serving. But it gives the, this a little bit of extra kick and it's so, so delicious. Um, now in order to know if your essential oils are um, edible and able to be ingested, there should be a nutritional label on the back of your essential oil bottle. So you can look at that. If it doesn't have one, that means that you should not be eating it. So things like wild orange and things are very, very safe. There's a nutritional label on the back. So you can easily add that in and just put in a drop or two and it's going to go a really long ways.
All right. Should be nice and thick. Oh. You can obviously use just a spoon and put a dollop or whatever on your pie or whatever it is that you're serving. Or you can put it into a piping bag and get things a little bit fancier.